All right, we're going to look at our course outline. We're halfway through November. The semester is picking up speed. And assignment six is due by 11.59 tonight. So on November 15th, here we are. You want to make sure you get something turned in for assignment six. The three things that are required are your line art, not your line art, sorry, your black type design, right, which is like the line art from assignment five, but it's black vector type design, your color type design, and it's okay if you post those with a spot illustration, without a spot illustration, you just don't want to have backgrounds on those, so I can see clearly what is in the type design in both black and color, and then the full poster illustration. And we're going to do a presentation critique on those today. Uh, digital honors, you're working on something very similar, which is your logo type title flag for the property you're creating with your characters. And you're going to then use those on a poster for your assignment seven. And then digital one, digital art one, we're basically doing digital painting next for assignment seven. So I'm going to introduce some brush things to you that we can use as touch-ups on our posters. So we're going to go to that assignment, assignment six, which includes our assignment five color spot illustration. And remind you that under assignments, you have these extra resources, mentorship presentations, and then my exhaustive explanations, right? which are more in-depth than you need, but can help you understand things that you see or like in other people's work and then understand how to do it. The one thing we haven't really talked about enough are color holds, which is something that can be done at the end of a process. And then kind of just individual touch-ups. So I'm going to touch on those today. And then under assignment six, you'll see what I was talking about at the end of last class, this exhaustive exp explanation of CMYK color separation, which we just started to apply to our posters, or at least learn how to apply to our posters last class. Uh, this is my morning class, and I'm playing with applying CMYK color separations to it in a very subtle way. So you can see the little dots kind of running through the printing. to complement some of the diffusion separation that's that's just done with dissolve layers. But if I put it at normal mode, you can see how those dots run through everything, especially if I do it at full opacity. Right. So that's CMYK dot separation. But it can be used in a variety of ways. Actually, let's take it back to here. All right, so let's look at the poster from this, this section. I'll close this stuff down. Always need to save our work, right? And this might be something you apply on assignment six. It might be something you apply on assignment five or that you just want to keep in mind for your final, final art assignment. So I'm going to open up my PSD, but I'm going to not use Photoshop. I'm going to use PhotoP. And we're going to talk about color holds and other kind of touch-ups we could do at the end. And this will introduce us into using a, a brush in a different way than just painting black lines. Because we've used a brush directly for digital inking. But not for much else. All right, so what you see... This is all the, the digital coloring I did. The, the way I got this, this slight diffusion texture was by simply taking a copy of my digital color 
I'll do it again here. Rasterizing that copy, if there's anything that needs to be rasterized in it. And then playing with its colors. Let me turn this music off. You have to shift the colors a little bit, either brighter or darker, so that there's some variation with it underneath. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments. Yeah, let's make it full. Image, Adjustments, the Direct Adjustments uh, Levels. And I'm just going to push the midtones darker, like that. Maybe limit the highlights a little bit. This is on a duplicate of my colors. And then I'm going to go to, let's say, color balance and just push these around a little bit. This is to get that textured effect. If you have just really clean digital color and you want to muddy it up a little bit, make it look like it has some, some print variation. It's something I like to do. Right now I'm just doing it on the character. You can see the really clean digital gradations on the lettering. So I'll shift the midtones, I'll shift the highlights. I'm just playing it in different ways. It's not trying to make it look better, it's just trying to get something different than the original. Shift the shadows. Okay, so this is my duplicate. That's my original, right? So pretty different. Now I'm going to change it in the layer blending mode from normal to dissolve. And at 100% opacity it makes no difference, but what dissolve does is when I take the opacity down on a dissolve blending layer, it's going to break it up in what's called a diffusion dither. Which means that it's lessening the opacity by individually subtracting pixels and leaving behind a random amount of the original pixels. So if I take it down 75%, that means it's subtracting 25% of the overall pixels in their entirety. And what does that look like? Looks like this when you get up close to the actual pixels. But what does it print like? It prints with this very subtle texture. And I do it on my color, not on my line art, because I don't want to interfere with my line art. Now, I did a layer that was quite dark, so I'm going to dissolve this more than 75%, maybe 25%, and that subtracts 75% of the pixels from my color change, so that instead it's like this. Now, what if I like that, but I don't want any of the white to get muddied you know, by my off-white color change. Well, I can just use my magic wand on this copy layer and have contiguous unchecked, select all the white. And that's going to be everywhere, right? And then just delete it so that those whites are clear and clean from any of that diffusion texture fill. Now what's interesting about using dissolve filters is they print great, but they won't show up on your screen great when you're zoomed out. This is what it actually kind of looks like and what it would print like. Maybe you want to give it a little more saturation. So again, I can play with levels or with direct adjustments to do it. Come on, there we go. Going to brighten it up a little bit. But when I zoom out, it starts to look a lot chunkier. And that's because these are distinct pixels, and the computer kind of has trouble showing you tiny, clear edges, right? So this is what's called a moray pattern. And so it looks a lot dirtier there than it really is. So don't let that freak you out, especially in Photo P, if you want to use that dissolve layer to give it a little bit more texture when printing.
But I like that. So that's one kind of touch up you can do. Another one. So I'll, I'll mark that. I want to turn it on before I close it. But so that the moray pattern doesn't confuse, I'll turn it off for now. Another is just to make a, a new layer. I often will do it just of the black line art. And if you don't have your black line art, line art separate in your illustration, like I don't, I just have my smart object, right? And I just put a white stroke on it. What you can do is uncheck contiguous and select just your black lines. And if it gets a little too much, you can take your tolerance down and then do it again. Oh, got to be on the right layer. Want to do it from your vector, nice and clean, or from your smart object. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to duplicate that. And then you see that it duplicates the stroke. I don't want it to duplicate the stroke. So this is just a copy of my black line art for my illustration. What's nice about that is now when I want to do touch-ups, I'm going to call this layer touch-ups. And I'm just going to use a raster brush directly to fix little issues or adjust colors. So for one thing, I don't like how this circle is bright white and this one isn't. I think I want to muddy up that little circle a little bit. So I'm going to use my tablet and I'm going to use a brush. And on this brush, I'm going to try something other than the defaults, right? So, so far we've just used straight round brushes like that. And we've modified them by using the pressure sensitivity so they can be thin or thick or the opacity sensitivity, which doesn't actually work all that well. <laughs> so I always use it with pressure sensitivity. If you only use it with opacity, it works a little bit better, but it takes a really light touch to get it not to show up. All right. Okay. Now remember, on this touch-up layer, I have the black lines. And the reason I do that is because then I can use my magic wand with contiguous and select an area to paint within. So let's do that. So an area to paint within would be this circle. If I want to muddy it up, I can use my brush and I can use option to select a color and then I can just paint. But that gives me the same kind of painting I've been doing before. So, so the issue with it just on browser-based is it's really, really sensitive, right? So you have to barely touch to get it. But that gives you one way of variation. What I want to show you is a way you can break up its flow and its opacity so that it can be much softer transitions. So this is the first time we're using a brush tool, varying opacity and flow to get kind of softer edged effects. We can also try other shapes of brushes. Right, so they don't always need to be circular. And then if you go over here to what's called brush settings, you can actually customize these things. And you can see what these different default brushes that load with PhotoP give you. The thing I like to customize is angle and spacing. Come on. This is how you can get more variation for touch-ups, if that's what you want. You can even play with scattering and make them kind of an airbrush kind of uh, effect. So all a brush is is a certain shape. And then you can have tip dynamics and you can play with the angle that they show themselves and I'll always jitter it so that shape now is going at a different angle and I'm going to control